Oh! Do you know, I was just thinking, it's been quite a while since anybody came around the uh, came into the garage to have a chat and see what was going on. Well, we're getting there. However, now that you're here, I'm glad you're here, because I've been thinking of something, one of the cars outside. Now, you know all the cars on the driveway, because they've all been featured in all the videos on the channel, but in all that time, the only one that I haven't talked about much, I've mentioned it a couple of times, haven't talked about it much, in fact, it's the one that mostly gets ignored, and rather shamefully, a piano has been left abandoned at the bottom of the garden, and here it is. Now this is my 1993 Toyota Hilux Surf, or if you're watching this from the USA, 1993 Toyota 4Runner. Now I've actually owned this thing since um, 2012, June of 2012, so it's coming up with 12 years that I've owned this for. Now sadly and shamefully, it's been languishing here in the hedge for two, three, four, maybe five years. Now, as you can see, the hedge is starting to take over. Unfortunately, there's greenery appearing everywhere, slowly creeping through. It is suffering somewhat with the normal Toyota Hilux uh, rust in the back of the bumpers. Now, this one is a diesel. It's a 2.4 litre diesel with an automatic gearbox. And this is what it looks like under the bonnet. Now, it's a bit dirty, a bit grubby. There's cobwebs kicking about in a few places because it's been sitting for so long. Now, this one, as I said, this is the 2.4 litre. It's diesel powered. Now, it comes with the winter pack. Now, as far as I'm aware, or let her believe, the winter pack gives two batteries. They're the ones busy getting charged at the minute. So the winter pack's two batteries and a rear heater in the back of the car. Or at least, depending where you read online, it tells you that the winter pack is the two batteries and the heater in the back. Some areas that I've read through in the last couple of days say that uh, all surfs after a certain age came with the twin batteries and the winter pack was just the heater in the back of it. Whichever doesn't make any difference because at the minute it's the twin battery power and uh, it's got the heater in the back as well as obviously the ones in the front. Now it does need a fair bit of work under here. It's a bit of a mess. More about that in a minute though. Now if you know much about Hilux surfs you'll recognise the fact that it seems to be sitting a lot higher at the front than, uh, than they do normally. That's because this one before I bought it it's had a, a four inch lift kit put on it but it's only a body lift so all of the chassis and the engine and gearbox and everything um that's all still as it would have been from the factory so it still has the factory center of gravity it's just the body itself that's been lifted four inches on it which is why the engine sits a little bit low under the bonnet and this is what it looks like inside that's your normal toyota dash you can know the dust it has been sitting for a while as i said your normal toyota dash a few switches that I've added in to various things I've added onto the car, but it's pretty much your normal Hilux Surf or Forerunner inside. The seats are in absolutely amazing condition, apart from the split here and the seam on this one and the damage to that bolster, but that's normal on these cloth seats. Now, when I bought it, it had its standard wheels on it. There were 15 inch rims. I added these ones, the 15 inch Weller 8 spokes with 31 by 10 and a half tyres. Let's jump inside and have a comfortable seat. Now, as you can see, it does have a sunroof up there as well, which the last time I used it, the sunroof did work. <laughs> Whether it still works or not is another thing altogether. Now, the reason it's parked here, and the reason it's being parked here for quite cons some considerable amount of time, is purely because it failed its MOT. Now, when it failed its MOT, on the way home from getting it MOT, it started smoking. It started smoking pretty badly. It had done it a few times before I took it for a MOT, just on start up, and once it was warmed up, the smoke would disappear. So I didn't think too much about it. But uh, I brought it home, and I did park it up on the drive. I had every intention of working on it, but as usual, life got in the way. Other cars took priority. Other cars were much more fun than just driving this, what at the time was my daily driver. Now, I did have to do a bit of work on it when I first bought it. It seemed fine and it looked absolutely okay when I first bought it, but not long after getting it and using it as daily driver and doing ordinary daily driver duties, early one morning it overheated. Unfortunately, I didn't notice in time, so by the time I saw that the needle was in the red on the temperature gauge, there was steam everywhere from under the bonnet, so I pulled over. Once it was checked out, it appeared to be a water pump problem. The water pump had failed, causing no water to be thrown around the engine, so would put fresh water in, drove it home. I was followed by the uh, the AA because it was those those that I called when uh, when I broke down, unfortunately. So they followed me home, managed to get home okay. Now I did think at the time it was just the water pump that had gone, but further guest investigation when I got it home proved that it wasn't the water pump. It was actually the head, the cylinder head. 
Now, if you know anything about Toyota 4Runners at all, the 2.4 diesels in the second generation, they are prone to cracking heads when they overheat. The head gasket never goes. The head gasket's always fine. It's always the head. So when the engine was stripped down, lo and behold, there were six cracks in the cylinder bores, uh, or the top of the cylinder bores, between cylinders two and cylinder three. So I stripped as much of the engine down whilst it was still in the car as I could, and uh, I was just going to get a new head, put the new head back on, build the engine back up, get the thing running and driving again. But unfortunately, when uh, when I stripped the engine down and took the cylinder head off, this is what I found on the top of the engine block around the cylinder bores. Luckily, though, I managed to find somebody at the other end of the country who had a cylinder block for sale or a short block for sale, and managed to get that, got that shipped up here, and built the engine back up, put the new head on, got everything back together, also deleted the AGR system altogether while the engine was out of the car because <laughs> emissions, you don't worry about that, not at all, don't need to worry about those. So the AGR delete, uh, delete was put in, I put a, made a couple of stainless steel plates to block off all the holes where the AGR should have been connected to, got those on, and then eventually got the engine back in the car and got it started up. Did make a couple of mistakes when I put the engine back in the car, when I plumbed everything in and got everything connected, connecting the glow plugs and the fuel rail, I think it was in the right order, I missed one of the insulators, so I instantly blew the 80 amp fuse that uh, that powers the whole ignition system on the car. But lesson learned, got another fuse off of, uh, off of Flea Bay, put that in, and the car was up running and driving. Now, as I was saying before, when it got parked up, um, life did get in the way, and other things took priority, so it's just been sitting around in various places in the drive, and for the last couple of years or so, it's been parked here in the garden in the ne next to the hedge. I haven't seen this side of the car. I've seen none of that side of the car uh, for at least two or three years. I do know the front wheel on that side is uh, is totally flat. I'm not sure about the one at the back, but definitely the front one's flat. And the one on the driver's side here seems to be going down. So anyway, why am I making this video? Why we're in the car? Why am I telling you all this? Well, you'll have seen the car hanging around and poking its head out now and then in the back of most of the videos on the channel. And for some reason, whilst I've been watching YouTube recently, it's been recommending me 4x4 videos and, uh, and Hilux, 4, Hilux 4 runner videos and third generation videos. Uh, YouTube seems to want me to watch 4x4 stuff. And a lot of you watching this will be under the impression that uh, Land Rovers are the ultimate 4x4 vehicles to have. And to a degree, that is true, especially if it's an early Land Rover, one of the original ones. However, these Toyota 4x4s are really capable for what they do. Uh, there's a mountain of videos on YouTube about them, but all the videos on YouTube are the first gen, or the third gen, or the fourth gen, or the fifth gen. There's a few, but nowhere near as many on this model, the second gen. And, uh, well, I've got one. It needs putting back on the road, so why not play around with it and have some fun with it? But I don't just want to put it back on the road as a daily driver. Um, it would be a very capable daily driver, or at least it certainly used to be a very capable daily driver. And I love the fact that it sits as high as it does with the, the four inch lift on it. Uh, the light bar up here on top of the windscreen that I put on, on top of the roof, uh, the light bar works brilliantly or did work brilliantly when I parked it up. Now I have had a couple of views of that back window, you can see back there. Uh, I'm guessing that when we do get this fired up again, that window is not going to go down. And obviously on the second gen, the only way to get the tailgate open is to get the back window down because the window is part of the tailgate. It's not a split uh, a split tailgate like a Range Rover. And it's, it's not doors and it's not a lift up one. It's a, it's a drop down tailgate, but the window slides into it. So I'm probably going to need to look at that area as well and do some work on that. But because it's a 4x4, the main thing I want to do with it is see how high I can get it off the ground. Now it's already on a 4 inch lift, as I said, but that's just a body lift. And you can get suspension lifts as well. So I'm going to look into the possibility of doing a suspension lift on it. I would like to put bigger tyres on it. Like I said, it's on 31s now, but I do like the idea of going bigger 33s, maybe 35s. Now, I know if I put, if it, if it didn't have a lift in the first place, it was just standard height, I could put 33 by 10 and a half on and they would be absolutely fine. They wouldn't rub anywhere. You could just drive the car as normal. But because this has already got a four inch body lift, it has moved the bodywork away from where the wheels normally sit in the in the archers so potentially i could get away with 33 by 10 and halves but could i get away with 33 by 12 and a halves or maybe 35 by 12 and a halves if i do a two inch suspension lift as well that would give it a total of six inches of lift that way i should be able to put 33 35s on 10 and a half 12 and a half 
without any problem whatsoever and without having to cut any of the body work away or worry about anything rubbing or any of the tyres catching when I was driving it around. And of course, it'd be absolutely great to take it off-road and actually do some off-roading in it. It's not going to be one of these Chelsea tractors that the only time it goes off-roading is when it bumps up a curb in the middle of a town somewhere. That's not going to be happening. This is going to get used when it's back on the road. It's going to get abused and it's going to get used heavily. But there's such a long way to go. There's so much work to do. So three about so what's wrong with it? I know it needs brake pipes because one of the things that failed to with Tion was brake pipes. And I honestly can't remember what the other thing was. I think there was two or three things all in. I can't remember what the other ones were. I would have to check the paperwork or have a look online. But certainly it does need a couple of brake pipes. It probably needs more than that now. Uh, other than that, um, I think the turbo is blown. There's definitely play in the spindle. But I do have a replacement turbo. Uh, the gasket that goes between the exhaust manifold and the cylinder head... Um, well, <laughs> the gasket snapped and all broke and half the gasket fell out. So whether I've lost a bolt which has allowed the, head to be, allowed the exhaust manifold to come loose or not, I, um, I'm not quite sure because I haven't checked that out yet. But I do have a replacement gasket to go in as well. And I also have some of the spare parts kicking about for it. Now this is how it looked when I first bought it. Now I have got a pair of light guards that match that lovely stainless steel bulb on the front to go on the rear lights at the back. I've got those. I think they're sitting somewhere over there on uh, on one of the bench and <laughs> what's left of me garage because obviously I'll still be working on this but we'll get there eventually I'm uh, just looking over things that need to be done to the car as we speak but I do want to do as I said I do want to do that lift on it there's a few other things I want to put on it I've also got a winch bumper to go on the front and I've got a winch to go in there as well now it's a 13,000 pound winch so that should be big enough in fact it has been used once that did come off another surf that I owned long before I had a YouTube channel, so I've got the winch bumper to go on, I've got the winch to go in, I do need to do something with the back bumper, in the minute I can't decide whether I replace the back bumper with another factory one, the same as the one that's on there, or instead of going for chrome, whether I maybe to put uh, a plastic one on, one of the grey ones you can get, or possibly just make a bumper up for the back myself that matches similar design to the winch bumper that's going to go on the front of it, as a lot of people seem to do. But it's certainly going to be a whole lot of fun and that's something i'm really looking forward to doing as you saw under the bonnet when we're out there one of the batteries is missing that's because it's in the house currently being charged as soon as that one's charged i'll take the other one out get that one in the house get that one charged up and then uh, who knows we'll see if we can do a will it start video it should do because there's nothing wrong with it the way it was running the only problem might be how long it sat and the length of time the diesel's been in the fuel tank but i'm sure it'll start it'll be fine it's not going to be a problem it'll start it'll be fine Right, well anyway, I'm going to leave the Hilux there behind me. I'm going to head back into the garage. And Jesus, it's bright out here. I mean, look at this. What a fantastic tin it's turned into. Excuse the alarm in the background. It's probably some shop getting broken into or something. Look at this. This is absolutely amazing out here. Wow. And of course, it has to be said, it's about time too. Let's get in here where it's a little bit more shady. Wow. It's lovely out there. Well... Hopefully, the weather's going to stay like this for quite a while now, and I can get the rest of the floor in here dried out, and I can carry on with everything else I was doing, and get part of the roof put back on, or the other half of the roof put back on, and then get one of the cars in here, and we can start doing some work. Sadly, the high looks, that's never going to be able to come in here. Unfortunately, because of the light bar and the four-inch lift and the wheels that I've got in it, it's too high to fit in here. But, never mind, that's just one of those things that'll have to be worked on in the driveway regardless. But hopefully we're heading into better weather and drier weather now. Now if you've watched the video all the way through at this part, leave a comment below and let us know what your favourite generation of Forerunner or Hilux Surf is, or let me know what you prefer as a 4x4, a Mitsubishi, a Toyota, or a Land Rover, or maybe a Range Rover. Let me know below which one you think is the best if you've watched through the video this far. And if you've enjoyed the video, caress the like button on the way out before the video ends. The more you caress the like button, the more YouTube will know that people are enjoying this video and they'll share it out to more people and that will help the channel grow. And if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing. Have a look around the channel, check the other videos out. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and then YouTube will make you aware of every time that I put a video out there so you can catch up on that one as well. And if you want to help support the channel, I do have stickers available. There's a link to those in the description of this one down there. There's also, you can buy me a cup of coffee if you want to help quench my thirst and keep me working, especially if it's going to be hot days like this or warm days like this. You can always buy me a coffee, link to that in the description as well. And if you want to join Patreon and become a patron of the channel, there's links to that in there as well. For now though, we'll catch you in the next one, which hopefully will be something to do with the garage. Thanks for watching this one.
Bye for now.